Hello, in this video I'm going to walk you through the process of connecting up an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One controller up to your Windows machine so you can use it on the RPCS3 emulator which is an emulator to play PlayStation 3 games. So let me show you the controller right now. So you should be seeing the controller. So I've got an Xbox One controller and got a couple of other things side to side, you know, you know, next to it. So there's a few ways that you can connect this. There's two main ways, wired and wireless. I will, you know, show you wireless in a second, but let's just cover the wired. So in terms of Xbox 360, if you have an Xbox 360 wired controller, that is literally a controller with a cable is in the controller you can't actually detach it that is just plug and play you plug it in you can just go to the rpcss3 part of this video where we actually do a little bit of setup there and that's it if you have an xbox one wired controller again not a wireless one that you plug in a micro usb but a wired one same thing as the xbox 360 wired plug it in plug and play and then you can you know, skip to a later part of this video if you have a wireless controller and you want to use a Microsoft, so this is with an Xbox One controller, any of them, new or old, and you want to plug this in and then plug this on the other end, this is also plug and play as well, and you can skip to the RPCS free side of it. Where it gets a little tricky is the wireless side. So Xbox 360 cannot be done unless you have a special adapter. So let me show you the adapter. 360 controller adapter so it's one of these adapters right here so that's not even an official one that's just a generic looking one but that's like the microsoft looking one i had one of those white ones and yeah so what you do you just plug the usb in and you just keep that button pressed and then you would keep the sync button pressed on your Xbox 360 controller. I'll show you how to do it on the Xbox One controller, same process. There is no way getting around it. You will need some sort of special dongle because this, the, I mean, the X, Xbox 360 controller does not have generic Bluetooth. It's a special proprietary wireless technology that Microsoft has put in there. As a result, <laughs> you can't use regular Bluetooth, which is annoying. I've only tried the official adapter, which works fine, works great. I'm sure the unofficial ones work fine as well, but I can't, you know, you know, personally vouch for them, but I'm sure they do. And yeah, you can either get a used one or just get a, a third party one. If the used one is like the same price as a brand new third party, or I'll just get a used one, if, you know, to be honest. But yeah, that's the situation with a 360 wireless controller. With Xbox One wireless controller, the situation is even trickier because if you have an old controller so if you've got a controller let's say from a launch xbox one console that also uses a similar proprietary technology that's in the xbox 360 controller you can't connect it using the xbox 360 adapter you need one of these special microsoft xbox adapters which i originally bought for when i bought my you know xbox one on launch so that doesn't have you know normal bluetooth built in as well so you need one of these plug it in you know this is just a usb and then this would be the sync button equivalent that you would have on your xbox one for example but 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 if you have a newer xbox one controller so this is from project scorpio so about three four years old so that, that's just one of the day one editions of what's it called, special editions of the Xbox One X. Since about, I think, 2016 onwards, they changed the controller slightly. So one of the changes that I know they made, they could have made this before, but I'm pretty sure, I definitely know they made it since then, is that these buttons are better now. Before, you couldn't click them from, you know, the inside of them. You would, you'd have to sort of click them like that. You couldn't click them inwards. It was, it was so stupid. Because, you know, like my fingers naturally are like that. So I'm clicking them like that. So you have to sort of click them like that. It is a stupid. Okay, the next, you know, major change which is related to this video is the Bluetooth. They changed it from the proprietary, proprietary technology to regular Bluetooth. So you can connect the newer ones 
to your PC or potentially another device using just the regular Bluetooth and the sync button on here. So find out which controller you've got. So if you've got a 360 wireless, you will need the 360 wireless adapter. If you've got an Xbox One wireless old controller, you need one of these adapters and these aren't cheap. It's, it's, it's no, so annoying. It's just, I mean, it is just crazy and 100% money making thing. It's just ridiculous. Okay, so yeah, you use one of these. And if you've got a newer one like I've got here, you can just connect it via Bluetooth or you can plug this in via wire. That, and that's the same with all the Xbox One controllers. It doesn't, if it's, it doesn't matter if it's new or old, luckily. And the 360 wired controllers work fine as well. So let me show you how to connect this up via Bluetooth. So let's open up your Bluetooth menu. I'm going to go to devices and printers. I haven't really got it connected, so let me do that. Uh, yep, there we go. So you can even connect it via here. I'm gonna connect it via the device and printing menu in case you're on, you know, an older OS or you know you're used to this interface. But you can go through that process as well. You need to put this in sync mode to do that. Keep this button pressed. This will turn the controller on. Then press this button for about three seconds. So that's that's looking now. Now that's flashing faster. Flashing faster because it's in sync mode. Go to add a device. Wait for the controller to appear in the to the device or print it to add to this PC section. I thought that was it then, that's it there. Go to next. Yeah, just wait for this to you know install any drive with any software that it needs to. But apart from that, it is just essentially wireless plug and play. But it is annoying that with the older Xbox One controllers, you need that special expensive adapter. With the 360 controllers, you absolutely need that expensive adapter as well. So, okay, that's connected. So now, assuming you've got your controller connected via this method, wired or wireless using the adapter for 360 or Xbox One controller, go and open up RPCSS3. And I'll put this down a second. And what we need to do is go to pads. Go to player one, two, three, or four, you know, you know, whichever one you're doing. So player one for me, go to handlers, select X input, that's what it is, and select the device, just the one. And if you look down here, the analog sticks, you will see that when I'm moving, that blue dot moves. Let me move this over a bit. Uh, as you can see, that blue dot moves. So, and I have over here is the triggers, like so. Um, yeah, so you can change the vibration. That's a small vibration on, large one on, and this is sort of switch mode, so switches between it. Totally up to you what type you want. And so the buttons are already mapped automatically to the way you'll probably like them. But if you do want to change it for a reason, maybe you want X instead of you know B. Also, oh, hit the mic then to be A, maybe you want it to be B. To do that, you press that, you wait for five, up to five seconds, press that, there we go. I'm gonna go to restore defaults, and the, yeah, that is literally all I want to show you. There's, you can change the device class if you are doing it for something else, like maybe Guitar Hero, for example. And make sure you click save, because if you do not, this will reset. Okay, one last thing, you can, Add a profile, just name it, click OK. So that means you could have different mappings, different combinations for maybe different games. So click save. And now that's it. You're all good to go. Let me show you a working. I'll launch up Minecraft. So I do get asked quite a bit, you know, why do I use Minecraft to test when I've got other games? And there's honestly two main reasons. One, if you if we go back, if you look, it's green, so that means it is playable, pretty much one hundred percent, and that's good. The other thing is because it's not a graphically intensive game, it runs relatively smooth when I'm recording. Everything's fine with playable games when I'm not recording, but when I'm recording, it can be a bit slow. Okay, so let me turn the volume down. There we go. As you can see, it is working. And you know, you can properly maximize it so you see everything as well if you want to. Let me just quickly get into a game, move around, and show you it, you know, 100% working. And there we go. Uh, and then I'll end the video. Or, you know, feel free to go away right now and start having fun 
with an Xbox 360, wider wireless Xbox One, wider wireless new or old controller, and yeah. There we go. As you can see, I can move around, I can jump, I can break stuff. Pause. And there we go. So, yep, that's it. That is how you connect up a 360 or Xbox One controller to your Windows machine so you can use the only RPCS free emulator which is a PlayStation 3 emulator. If you have any questions feel free to pop me a message and as usual I look forward to seeing you in the next video.